ladies and gentlemen, welcome to Total Extreme Wrestling, my name is Brendan Plays and today we are booking the first ever Smackdown for our 1999 series. We are in April, we are post-WrestleMania, and we've just done a draft. Yes, a draft, a brand split in 1999, we have actually gone ahead and done it. And here it is, here's the recap of the draft. So, we'll run through the draft and some of the major picks. So for Raw... Um, they got Steve Austin, Triple H, Kane, Shamrock, the New Age Outlaws, Mark Henry's back, Brian Pillman's there, some of the young guns like Edge and Christian, Al Snow, they have the entire women's division, Steve Blackman and Dan Severin, they're back, and if Chris Jericho and Raven, if they do sign, then they will end up here on Raw as well. The SmackDown, The Rock, Mankind, The Undertaker, Big Show, Kurt Angle, X-Pac, some of the big names, the Acolytes, Val Venus, and the Hardy Boys, they're definitely some names that could rise up the ranks. Um, in the middle of the card, you look at Jake Roberts, he's signed there. they got all the lightweights are over here. Some of the women like Sable, Ivory, Beulah, they're all on the on this uh, roster. And then when Rick Rude comes back, he'll be here. The Hollies, Test, some new names, Super Crazy, Tiger Mask, they're on the roster. Same with Frank Kazarian. And if we can get Ultimo Dragon and the Dudley Boys, then they will be here on SmackDown. Gangrel splitting up from the Brood as well, coming over here. Shane McMahon, he'll be the general manager of SmackDown, and Jim Cornette, the GM of Raw. We really struggled to find a GM for Raw. That just wasn't a good option. It just wasn't a right guy for it. But Jim Cornette, he'll probably be the man he'll do it for a little bit. Perhaps until I bring in Stephanie McMahon, maybe we'll take over the job uh, in the future. Not sure yet, but uh, it's an idea. Mark Mara was not drafted. Um, obviously, we did a storyline where he got fired. So, I says, dare say he will try and uh, interrupt SmackDown and really, you know, get under Shane McMahon's nerves and try and um, disrupt everything as much as he possibly can. And eventually, Shane will cave and give his job back. So, that's the that's the idea anyway. So, we'll, we'll see that. So, that's the recap of the draft. Um... The European title will be on Raw, the IC on SmackDown, the lightweight on SmackDown, the women's on Raw, the heavyweight and the tag titles will be floating around between each brand. So whoever is on, whoever is the the tag team champions will no longer be on a brand. So Owen Hart and Jeff Jarrett are not assigned to a brand right now. Likewise with Hulk Hogan. So if you become the world champion, you can compete on both brands. Now for Hulk Hogan's sake, his contract doesn't even allow him to wrestle on on Raw or SmackDown. So it wouldn't have mattered anyways. He couldn't have been on either anyway. Um, he is just the definition of a part-time special attraction. So he'll only show up on a pay-per-view. He'll only work pay-per-views. And for his first opponent, I've got no idea. And that's what we need to figure out next. We've got a lot of new storylines we've got to sort out. We're going to try and figure out what direction we're going to take with both brands. Who's going to be the top star of each brand? Um, you know, looking here, pretty obvious. Raw's going to be Austin's show. SmackDown's going to be The Rock's show. And eventually, maybe at WrestleMania, those two will meet in the middle and uh, we'll have that epic clash at WrestleMania. The Rock and Austin will finally do it at the big dance. Um, but then you've got you know, Triple H, Kane, Shamrock to work with Austin, Taker, Mankind, Big Show, Kurt Angle, even X-Pac potentially to all work with The Rock. So we've got plenty of names to work with our top big name stars and obviously Hulk Hogan floating around as well. You never know where he's going to pop up. So yeah, there's a few options there indeed. Um, you might have noticed Shawn Michaels, he's on that list. Shawn Michaels has one day left on his contract. This is the final day for Shawn Michaels' contract. And we might have his last match take place on SmackDown and put over one of our young guns. Um, it'd be a big opportunity for someone to beat Shawn Michaels clean in the middle to really put them over. Um, it'll have to be someone from SmackDown, of course. So we'll have to figure out who that's going to be. You know, you could probably put over someone like a Bradshaw or something like that is it is no way in hell you are a he up mid card is super crazy back down to the lower card you go so we'll have to take a look maybe a Val Venus you could really put him over with a big win over Michaels or a Bradshaw whichever direction you want to go in you can go there so there's an option there for us but I'm very much so excited Smackdown's a really exciting prospect I just feel as though the series was getting a little easy to have some big shows and we have so many main event guys it was hard to get everybody on the card. Um, SmackDown would have sorted that anyways by kind of allowing us to put some guys on Raw, some guns on SmackDown. But if we split it up completely, well, it's a unique proposition. It's a great opportunity for us to show that 
you know, we can take this, you know, guys from the lower end of the card and build them up and make them stars, get them over. We've got a lot more opportunity to work on the on the talents in the middle rather than focusing on the guys at the top all the time, which is what we were kind of doing. You know, we had to feel, we had to give The Undertaker his 20 minutes, Austin his 20 minutes, The Rock his 20 minutes. It just became really difficult to, to make that happen with how we had it structured. So now I feel as though we've got enough guys at the top of the card to keep things interesting. And then the guys in the middle, well, let's hope that they can uh, improve and uh, we can get them over so they become more valuable for us uh, in long term. You know, we've got a lot of guys in the lower card that I'm really excited to push. You know, Al Snow, I think he's got a lot of great potential. You know, Gangrel even, the Hollies, the lightweights like Hayabusa, they've got a bit more TV time now. Rikishi, I think, could be a big star for us. Test as well. You know, some great names here. And we've got this new MMA faction as well. I think we called them Martial Law, which I think is a cool name. Dan Severin, Steve Blackman, and Takata. So a brand new group will be coming in. I believe they, yeah, they're coming on Raw. So that's an also an exciting prospect for us as well. So there's some good things happening. And uh, I'm pretty excited for the first SmackDown. So this is the first SmackDown in the series. Let's have a look. The first segment featured Shane McMahon welcoming everybody to SmackDown. Then you have the top dogs of SmackDown, The Rock, Mankind, Big Show, Taker, all coming out, interrupting, as they wanted to prove that they are the most dominant. Now, who, who's the big dog? Who's the top guy here on SmackDown? Who's the main man? And, um, yeah, so we had those four out there all trying to prove that. Oh, also helping us Shane McMahon and Mark Mera storyline out too. Okay, very good. Uh, as well as the, the Rock and Mankind. We uh, debuted the Hollies, and we had them against a couple of local guys just to um, put them out there. Uh, Hardcore Holly, his injury uh, took a big toll on his performance. Okay, yeah, 35 from Holly, crash 19. Jeez, the local guys outperformed them just about. Um, Hardcore Holly, we're going to turn him. And above average for his badass gimmick, and the turn was a success. Okay, great. So Holly's now heal with crash. And they're another heel tag team for us. Test. We had a hype video for him. And uh, displaying him there. Kind of uh, showing off what he can do. Georgia. Oh, that's right. We're putting her with um, Test. And she's got above average for her gimmick there. 63 for that. So a little menace video for Test. x Park cut a promo on Takamichi Noku. Saying that he was the... He was right all along. He is the best lightweight in the company. Takamichi Noku interrupted and attacked X Park and actually took him out. So Takamichi Noku laying out X Park just to get a bit of revenge and just kind of set up for a future match between the two. Uh, speaking of the lightweights, Hayabusa finally getting, getting himself a chance to wrestle again. A bit more TV time now for him. He defeated Marty Jannetty and we say thank you to Marty Jannetty for putting over one of our new guys on his way out. So we salute Marty Gennetti. And uh, high boost of 52, Gennetti 49. I mean, Gennetti can still go. Uh, there's no doubt that he's still got plenty to offer, but we're just kind of going with a bit of a youth movement right now uh, in the lightweights. We're 46 there in that match. Vampiro getting himself an opportunity to cut a promo. He's ready to step up and take what is his. He's referring to the Intercontinental Championship, and Shawn Michaels will be his first victim that he looks to take, make an example of. 83 for that one. It's a good start to uh, what will be Kurt Angle versus Vampiro in the upcoming feud. Michaels and Vampiro had a match. It was an 80 rated matchup, and Michaels broke his wrist. <laughs> oh, what a shame. He took a crazy bump in the match. He broke his wrist, and Shawn Michaels... Uh, hit a 90. Vampiro was good. 65. You gotta remember, Vampiro's got about 50 pop. 51, 52 at best. And gets a 65. That's fantastic. 80 rated. That'll gain the heat for the Angle and Vampiro storyline. And Shawn Michaels broke his wrist. That is amazing. Yeah. That's some justice right there. Thank you very much. There you go. Confirmed it. It was from the crazy bump. Wasn't Vampira botching? Well, here's a great way to start off a new storyline. 
Bratron for Rook, Storm in locker room, just throwing hands. He just... These two guys decided, alright, this is smack down, well let's, let's smack a few guys down, shall we? But they went into locker room and they just fought everyone. The Hardys, the Headbangers, Pimp Nation were their main targets, and they were beaten down as the Acolytes sent a big, big message to the locker room. I still don't know if we need to turn the Headbangers. Now we've got the Hollies. I feel like we probably don't. Um, I think we keep them Bayface now, so we might actually cancel their turn. And the main event! Oh my goodness, what happened? Low storyline heat for Shane. Well, that shouldn't really matter. Oh no. That was the only real thing. What, the storyline was that bad? Bad announcing too, yeah. The Rock 93, Mankind 94, Taker 93, Big Show 81. It just wasn't good. I guess Michael Cole announcing is just no good. I, I guess we might just have to bring over JR. Well, everyone did well. Everyone in the match did well. Even Big Show did okay. But just, I guess, the announcing and then the Mero and McMahon storyline hit. But then again, like, that shouldn't really matter that much when you got the Rock and Taker storyline hit that was really strong. Now that's ruined now. That's, that's gone now. But, um, yeah, well, the Rock and Sock, they beat the Big Show when Mark Mero distracted the Big Show and um, took allowed uh, the Rock and Sock to win. Alright, well, I guess we're going to have to change our announcers and bring JR and have just our announcers work both shows because we just can't have it. It just, it just isn't good. There's no announcers on the market at the moment that we can sign other than Joey Styles, but he's with ECW. Um, yeah, that's uh, that's a big blow. That's That should have been a 90-plus match, and then it wasn't. So our first SmackDown, 83. Nearly 20,000 attended, but just wasn't good. Just wasn't good. Yeah, the chemistry, yeah, I mean, it does help. Whew. All right, well, let's have a look at our rating for SmackDown. So we're going head-to-head -head with Thunder as well. That's not a big problem, though. 41.57, so just a touch under what perhaps Raw would get. Not much, though. Raw sometimes gets around the high 41s, but normally low 42, so very close, which is great. 31 million people watching, yeah, I wish. Um, yeah, but a little bit of a down, like that match should have been much better. If we had got 90 plus for that matchup, we would have had probably close to a 90 rated show and would have had a great start. Is what it is. All right, let's take a look at Thunder. Scott Norton beat Ahmed, Kidman beat Mortis. All right, well, nothing much happened in there. Not not much competition for us, really, there. Well, Shawn Michaels, how long is he out for? Okay, 17 days. Well, at least they can't debut Shawn Michaels straight away. He's got to take a bit of time off. And he also lost two pop after losing to Vampiro. So Michaels takes a small little hit, and WCW won't be able to do much with him for a, a little bit. Um, let's take a look at some of our swings from SmackDown, if we had any. Vampiro is obviously the big one. Okay, so Vampiro's now got 54, 53 popularity, which is great. He had a great match, good performance from him. So about a two to three boost up from Vampiro. Now we could have had Vampiro squash on Michaels, but that just wouldn't have been the right way to have Vampiro um, really perform. I think you've got to have Vampiro. I know he's got great medicine and all, but I think you've got to have Vampiro go toe to toe in a long. Long matchup with a great technical guy like Shawn Michaels just to really prove that he's ready for angle uh, storyline wise. Tess got a bit of TV time now, 21 pop, moves up. Hardcore Holly's got 39 pop, good. Uh, this injury, what is going on with this injury? He's got neck nerve damage. That uh, That's like a type of injury that'll keep him out forever. Crash Holly gets a bit of a boost up. Okay. So two months and three more weeks, so that. That's a, a, a six-month injury, seven-month injury for Hardcore Holly, where he's not going to be at his best. Jeez, that's going to be real. That's going to be tough to work with. Because we'd like to push Hardcore Holly, but if he's not going to be performing well at all, then you're going to have a problem. Alrighty, thank you, thank you, Sean. 
one last parting gift from Shawn Michaels. This is my... Pr I, I had a feeling this was going to happen. But the good news is a couple of people that he made hate The Rock, like Devin Storm, don't even work in the company. And all the other new people that just debut, they already hate The Rock now. Great. So I think literally the entire SmackDown locker room hates The Rock. Well, at least we broke the prick's wrist. <sighs> Mike Sanders, Lodi, uh, Kevin Sullivan, Brian Cluck, um, Sandman, all staying with their respective companies, Billy Silverman. Too Cold Scorpio, he'll stay with us. Fantastic. Bubba Ray Dudley, one of the Dudleys is coming over. Now, um, I initially thought he was the way to go with him, and it might still be, but with the Hollies now, Pimp Nation's not a bad team, the Hardys. I think maybe Babyface might be an option for the Dudleys. They are a better Babyface team, surprisingly. Hmm. I'm not sure. Oh, Michael Cole wants a pair off. Oh, you son of a bitch, Michael. You were terrible. What, you get one night on TV and you think you're worth more money now? Jesus. All right. All right, Randy Anderson will stay with WCW. Scott Norton as well. No loss. Our contracts. All right, here's a couple of one good ones. Mark Mero will stay. Surprise! I'm re-signing Mark Mero, but we're gonna we're gonna stick with him. We'll give him another six months. This feud, I hope I hope with uh, Shane McMahon might get him over to the 60s and be a little bit more valuable to us. Um, I like what this storyline we got going with him though. Chris Jericho. He's a better heel, and uh, he'll come in as an up mid carder for now, and he will be on Raw. Um, Simon Buff Bagel, no. Percy Pringle, keeping him, and <sighs> thank God. Stone Cold Steve Austin is not going anywhere. Thank goodness for that. We needed to keep that man. Let's take a look at Sunday Night Heat. So Toyota, 65 for a promo on Archer Kong. It's, it's pretty good. Um, saying that uh, she's proud to be the women's champion. Very proud. Good on you. Gold Novelties defeated the Headbangers for 63. Um, Golga, 47. Goldust, 67. Mosh, 51. Thrasher, 55. Why is Thrasher so much better than Mosh? Ultimate Warrior had a 68 promo on William Regal. Alrighty. Lost storyline heat. Warrior couldn't do a promo. What a shock. Marty Jannetty lost to Al Snow in seven minutes. 56 match. Al Snow, 59. Now, it was seven minutes. So, the shorter it is, some guys will do a lot better. But still, 59 is um, very good. I love this connect. I love this combination. Mark Henry, Jim Cornette. How great is it? 96. Jim Cornette hyping up how dominant Mark Henry is. And Mark Henry just looks like a million bucks. What are we? Oh, yeah. We might be turning him bay face. I don't know if we're doing that yet. Uh, are we turning Jim Cornette? Yeah, we are potentially. Okay. Well, I love this connection. This is a great great combination these two guys have and it's really working well and like Sheba said earlier on you know you put Mark Henry with Jim Cornette and then all of a sudden Henry just gets elevated at those few extra points and could be a main event guy main event was Taka Owen Hart and Double J versus DX 78 perhaps the last time we see DX team up together Owen Hart 87 Jeff Jarrett 80 65 from Taka 78 from Billy Gunn 79 from Road Dogg and x Park. Can't believe he's outperforming Owen Hart now. 89. There you go. Very good. A 77 rated heat. All right, let's have a look at any contract situations we may have. Raven. We've got him. Raven's coming in. Oh. Well, we had to pay up our ass to get him. And we've got the man. Raven signing with the WWF. Oh my god, look at them stats. Look at the performance stats. 85, 87, 
84, 88, 83, Brawling 84, Hardcore 84, Mike Skill. This guy is the complete package. He's got it all. Wow, I, I, I knew he was good, but seriously, this good? Holy, holy shit. All right, let's have a look at Raw is War. Here is the first branded Raw. I'm hoping to uh, have a big one. Let's uh, actually put that up there and let's do it. All right, so the pre-show, the Golden Oddities defeated Too Cool. Um, good match, 69. Golga, 52. Goldust, 73. Scotty, 53. Grandmaster, 62. We opened up the show with Jim Cornette saying, he's now in charge of Raw. I don't want to see any bull, you know what, on my show. No BS, no corporation BS. Austin, you figure it out. Shamrock, I don't want to see anything from you. Hogan, I don't want to see anything from you. I want to have a clean, fair show. Everyone gets a chance, fair and square. Yeah, how's that going to go? Jimmy, and that will turn him baby face. Turn went pretty well. Okay. Uh, well, Shamrock, we were going to turn him face. We need to cancel that. He's staying heel. 100 rated. Marty Jannetty then took on Rikishi one-on-one -on -one for 42. Marty Jannetty, 39. Rikishi, 51. Rikishi picked up the quick win as we try and uh, get him a little bit of popularity as this probably will be Marty Jannetty's last match here in the company. Maybe he can get one more on Raw. Um, SmackDown, rather. I'm not sure. Kane was seen walking into Vince McMahon's office backstage. What's going on there with Kane? Um, so we'll see there. Brian Pillman promos from his rehab room as he talks about all his drug issues and where he's currently at uh, in terms of his career and whether or not he's going to come back anytime soon. You know, what's going on with Pillman? That's basically what we try and figure out there with his rehab room. 67. We introduced Martial Law. Don Callis, the foreman, formerly known as the Jackal, he interrupts Awesome Chains and he brings out his new group, Blackman, Severin, and Takata, all coming out and kicking the asses of Awesome Chains. All right, well, I feel like we're going to have too many quick turns here tonight in this show. But we're going to. Mm, we'll do it for Blackman. Okay, it was success. success. Takata. Just to be, because we got it, we're trying to turn Kane later on the show as well. So we'll just keep this one for next time. Give him a couple more segments. Okay, seventy-five for that one. So we bring in the new group. It's a pretty good start, I think. Seventy-five. That's uh, I'm happy with that. Ludovicon defeated Yagua Yokota for fifty-three. Um, Vashon 50, Yokota 40. So, Yokota still has less than 40 pop, so, um, she's still got to get to that benchmark. And we're going to look to try and push Luna a little bit stronger now in part of the women's division. Triple H and the New Edge Outlaws are out in the ring discussing what their future is and what, you know, where's DX going to go? You know, Triple H is in discussion with him. And I think Triple H, we could basically say, look, you know, you guys work for me, I'm the leader, you do what I say. Kind of just demanding what the, the outlaws need to do in the future. Now that Triple H has beaten Shawn Michaels, you know, he believes he's the man, he's got rid of Shawn Michaels, now you do whatever I say. So kind of the outlaws might rebel here and maybe look to move on. And the main event, well that's more like it. A 98 rated main event. Kane versus Austin. Whew. All right. There, there you go. Um, yep. All right. So it was a double DQ when um, we had a run in. Actually, no. Kane, Austin won by pinfall. Well, that wasn't meant to happen. But anyways, I guess Austin beat Kane. I thought it did double key DQ. I guess I didn't. Um, but uh, maybe that's why the match was pretty good in the end. Well, Shamrock interfered, and he attacked Austin, he attacked Kane, and uh, we had a 98 rated match, so that'll probably be the last time we see this match for a long time, so we figured, you know what, let's go out with a bit of a bang, let's start Raw off strong, and uh, Kane, we're looking to 
And we don't want to turn Shamrock with Kane, definitely. And then here we go. So, McMahon was demanding that Kane help him take out Austin. Obviously, they had that meeting earlier on the show. McMahon thought he was all sweet, thought he had Kane on his side trying to join the corporation. Um, Kane refused, though. He choked everybody but Austin. So he choked slammed Shamrock, McMahon, and Hulk Hogan, taking them all down, helping Steve Austin. And there you go. Kane rebels and turns babyface. And. Uh, 100 rated segments. So now we've got Kane and Austin together. We can go with Kane versus Hogan for the next pay per view, maybe. Austin and Shamrock. A couple of options we've got there right now. That gives us a 100 rated uh, segment and a 87 show. Not enough attractive women. Ah, uh, that's the problem. We put all our attractive women on SmackDown. Still got a few little issues there. Oh, I mean, we could have had a really big show there. No pun intended, but I think we could have had like a 90-plus a show which just had a few more attractive women. It's going to be a problem. We're going to have to try and sign a couple more, bring up maybe Tori. Uh, we need a couple of women in a managerial role for a superstar that we're going to use just about every show. The Golden Oddities is one with Marlena, but we need someone else to join her in doing some, some of the work. Mm. We say goodbye to Marty Gennetti. Bye, Marty. Thanks so much for coming out. Um, coming out, trying your best, putting on a little little run, you know, two years, nearly, a year and a half, a year and a half, you know. Um, you know, he tried. He tried his best. He uh, averaged 59. That's pretty good. 21 wins, 19 losses. Uh, 99 was a bad year for him. One win, eight losses. You tried, Marty. Um, who'd you beat? You want an eight-man tag on Heat. On heat. This is SmackDown, the second ever SmackDown. Let's take a look. Pip Nation's hanging out for the pre-show to get Bueller. And I think Sonny will be on the card now too. So that's something there for us. 68. We opened the show with a match, actually. I thought I opened it with a segment. I guess not. With a match. Bad Influence took on the Hardy Boys in a 77-rated match. Kazarian and Angel have excellent chemistry as does the Hardy, so two great tag teams. Fallen Angel, 67. Frank Kazarian, 40. Matt Hardy, 77. Actually outperformed Jeff Hardy. You don't see that happen very often. Jeff, 76. That will advance the tag team storyline we've got going on right now on SmackDown. So the bad influence will be an amazing team once we get Kazarian's popularity. I don't even know if it's 40 yet. So once we get into the benchmark and then go from there, wow, they're going to be a great team for us. This is what we were thought we were going to open with. It's uh, Take Out Rock and Mankind as they all argue over their upcoming triple threat match, which uh, you know we can confirm that will be the matchup at the pay-per-view. Super Crazy debuted, and he's got a thrill seeker gimmick of very good. Good start. And, uh, well, he's super crazy, so he's rambling on. He's acting a little bit crazy backstage. But what we ultimately got out of all those words that he was saying is that he wants to be the lightweight champion. Coming up to X Park and his championship in the future, 62. Scorpio took the L to test, and Georgia did some good work ringside. Well, there we go. So, Georgia and Test is a strong combination by the looks of it. Scorpio took the L, Test picked up the victory. Uh, won't hurt Scorpio at all. He's got 40 pop, and he'll get that back anytime. It will, though, make Test look pretty good and put him over as uh, we start to get Tess rolling. It does begin this storyline. And the next segment, we had Tess continue the beatdown on Scorpio for 60. So that's uh, good to see. 60 rated segment there. Shane McMahon announced that Sable is his new personal assistant. Um, and uh, Sable will be assisting McMahon whenever he needs it in the future. But he also said Mark Mero is now forever banned from SmackDown just to make sure that uh, Mero uh, got the picture. It might be a new show, but he's now banned from SmackDown. He was banned from Raw, banned from pay-per-views, now he's banned on SmackDown. So he's banned from everything. So Mark Mero is no longer welcome at all. He's fired. He's, he was fired, now he's banned from even showing up to the arenas. I guess that's what I'm trying to say. So 67, that will continue that storyline. 
Tiger Mask took on Crash Holly for 33. Tiger Mask 29, Crash 28. Both guys got very little popularity at the moment. So, again, getting them on the card to introduce them. Um, Tiger Mask, I don't think he's got... I think he might have like seven pops. So that's a, a pretty good performance, I guess, considering. Kurt Angle says he was impressed last week by Vampiro's big win over Shawn Michaels. So... Kurt Angle will be scouting out um, Vampira in the near future, keeping an eye on him uh, as a potential opponent of his 88 rated segment. It gives us Kurt Angle versus X Park one on one for 84. Again, I thought this might be a little bit stronger. Not quite though, but did still gain storyline heat overall. It was the low storyline heat that did let us down a little bit, I guess. Um, nothing else, I don't think. I think both guys did handle going all out pretty well, so that was my concern, but uh, nope, they both did fine with that. Angle 87, X-Park 85, Kurt Angle got the victory when we had an ankle lock after distraction from Taka Michinoku. Vampiro was also out there um, to interfere as well, so advancing both storylines at the same time, 84. Gives us an 83 rated SmackDown, so so far SmackDown not quite delivering just yet. Um, still kind of, you know, getting things happening. Just trying to figure out where we need to go with SmackDown. Just, it's okay. It's an 83 rated show. Don't mind it. Don't mind it. It's, um, definitely could have been a little bit better considering we had X-Park and Kurt Angle in the show, but, you know, it's fine. Can't win them all. Alrighty, let's have a look. SmackDown, we had a 42.18, so that's very close to what Raw would normally get. 18,000 people sold out the Verizon Center. Thunder. Um, Chris Jericho was on Thunder, as always. 67 rated show. 3,000 attended. Alrighty. Um, contracts. Alright, so Jeff Jarrett, JE, double F, is uh, going to stay with us. Six year contract, apparently. Yeah. Uh, WCW really fought us hard for him. 30% bonus. Look, I, to be honest with you, I only really want Jeff Jarrett for another year. <laughs> I don't want... Until this tag team is... When this tag team ends, I have no interest in Jeff Jarrett at all. But... Alright, so uh, Nora Greenwald will sign, which is Molly Holly. I want to bring her in as a baby face for my women's division in the future. So, let's have a work down there as one right now. Kristen Astara will come in. I have no idea who the hell she is, but um, she is a talented manager. Good sex appeal, good star quality, good mic skills. Can even work a little bit in the ring, you never know. So, she probably could do a bit of work in developmental, but um, I'm going to have her come in and just be a manager for now. And we need one. Is she a better face? 50-50. Alright, um, I will assess what we need. Dawn Marie, I know she's a heel. Absolutely. Um, she cannot wrestle, she's just there to manage, so she will be a manager. So maybe we put a star as a, as a face and, and Dawn Marie as heel. Ladies and gentlemen, thank you so much for watching. If you are watching on the YouTube, please do leave a like and subscribe to see more Attitude Era coming up from me in the near future.